Today, the IoT is broken out into certain segments that everybody is aware of. It's, you've got the smart city, you've got the connected um, industry, you've got the connected building. But if you were to double click on one of those segments, you'll see that there's a, a series of legacy sub-segments in there. So if I took the connected building example, there's already a, a market vertical around security, around personal movement, around facilities, around uh, boilers and heaters, about HVAC systems. And the problem is that these were created so many years ago, they have their own private little protocols and, and their own capability, how, how they connect devices. But there's another problem, and that is th none of these silos were intended to sort of talk to each other. And if they don't do that, how, act, how do you actually create an IoT? How can we increase the adoption of industrial IoT? And what are, the, what are the more pragmatic solutions that people need? Stop thinking about hardware or protocols and things. Think about it as a fabric layer. Right? A fabric that's implemented in our, our edge server. And you can plug devices in at the bottom. We've got standard hardware interfaces that will allow you to plug in any type of protocol or any type of device underneath. Right? It gets recognized, and then the data is extracted into this fabric that lives uh, across the edge. The, the big advantage now is that you can write an application, and you write that application to that fabric. You don't write it to the edge anymore. You don't write it to the protocol-specific deployments. And what this does is it guarantees you that if tomorrow a new type of protocol were to come along like, I don't know, maybe 5G, or, and that gets deployed a lot, or NB-IoT or something, it will still work. Right? But the other thing is because you have this fabric, you basically create a very flexible environment. Now you create an environment where you can take legacy systems, you can take emerging systems, and you can, yeah, and they can interoperate all the data between them. Right? You can make it extensible because tomorrow, if NB-IoT comes along, you can add that into the mix. It's secure, it's open, and it's also portable. Right? These are the requirements because, for example, people. People don't understand the importance of portability. Today we have something maybe that runs on an ARM chip. Tomorrow it might be an Intel chip. And the day after it might be on a RISC-V chip. Right? You want to create this sense of portability so you can take your environment with you as the world evolves. This is just an example of how we put it all together and how this all worked. You know, so it took some buildings data. We put it onto, uh, you know, onto our edge server. And then we added um, some uh, NXP chip capability for security to make it really very, very secure. And then we communicated through web APIs over <clears throat> into IBM Watson. And they were able to run some of their building insights, and they were able to capture energy data and all of this. Right. So um, the point here is not that the fact that it ran with IBM. <laughs> The point here is that it was really easy to do. In fact, the, the demo we have on our, at our booth is not connected to IBM, but it's connected to Microsoft Azure. It doesn't matter because the data is everywhere. And we move the data around really easily so you can do these deployments, right? And this is the fundamental thing that most industrial customers need. The flexibility, the adaptability, the, the reduction in cost and they want a guarantee that as they move to the future, that your platform doesn't get obsolete.